Ladies and gentlemen, I am your Planetary Defense Commander, Star-Lord New Thor 7. And the way I make my money and Irving and survive and thrive is through your contributions and donations. You can send a letter of support to T. Lewis in 5430 Birdwood Road, 416 Houston, Texas. I got a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App, and a Patron. If you want to thank me for all my awesome hard work. Last year, I was the only human being on the planet who got Hurricane Michael's intensity correct by using the Eris alignment as a pressure indicator. And so today is the actual day of the 2019 Eris alignment. And Eris is the planet that got Pluto demoted. And then NASA and everybody just shut up about it. And so we are seeing the classic quote unquote Eris signature here. It's a good reason that everybody needs to be on high alert through all of October. And so I'm here to tell you, you need to be prepared for the possibility of a major hurricane in Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, possibly even Louisiana in the next 48 hours. My overall prediction does not look like it was perfect because it was a week late. I thought it would be here on the 11th or 12th. And models have it trending to the west of Mexico City, and I had it somewhere around Crystal River, but we still have 48 hours until landfall. Cranky Weather Guy, one of my unofficial, or my unofficial partner in weather warrioring, has been absolutely almost perfect this hurricane season, and I always link his blog for you, and now we are going to check it out for a secondary warning. We're at Cranky's blog now, stormhamster.com, and the intensity models don't seem to be impressed with our upcoming storm. Current modeling isn't too enamored with the system, and this is cranky, but I'd keep an eye on that for now. Again, I'm not looking for a large, well-defined wind core, but I think the end result could feature a higher intensity than projected. A reason I like the chance this may do better than modeled is note the sharp convergent fetch in its northwest quadrant. If you already have a good wind field structure, it tends to translate through the life cyclone. We already have strong winds at the 850 millibar layer, and where there are those thunderstorms, note the translation to the surface with the gusts in the 50 to 60s. We know how they sample these storms these days. Any isolated wind gusts they can find become the de facto maximum sustained wind feed. And so, as such, the potential to become a high-end tropical storm or a close to Category 1 is plausible given the pinpoint monitoring now done. And I'd like to remind you all, last year, 99.9% .9 of all meteorologists weren't even sure Hurricane Michael was going to become a hurricane. Nobody thought it was going to be more than a Category 1. And now we are a year and five days from that event, and we are almost in the exact same scenario. Nicholas Barreto looks like the HWRF wants to strengthen future Nestor into 984 84 millibars. And notice the models keep strengthening it as it gets closer to the event, which is about 48 hours away. 984 millibars would definitely make it a hurricane. He, Nicholas Barreto goes on to say, I don't buy that because the storm will battle high wind shear loft, which is true, and be an asymmetrical system, which is true. Wayne Rainfall will be the primary concern in the Florida Panhandle, which is true. But I asked him, would you like to bet $20? And how was your call on Hurricane Michael last year? There's no reason to poo-poo a tropical storm or a possible hurricane, especially uh, so close to the Eris alignment. We have storm surge watches and tropical storm watches up for from Indian Pass to Clearwater. This means rising water will move inland from the shoreline, causing dangerous conditions. Prepare now if you live along the coast, and just stay aware if they, this thing does rapidly intensify, regardless of wind shear. Be prepared to get out of the way if it looks like it's going to be bad. Our Norbeaster Category 2 hurricane cyclone thingy broke records for the lowest pressure in all of May through November and came 10 millibars short of the all-time record. So uh, don't be surprised for more surprises. 
the track is subject to change, so everybody from New Orleans to Tampa Bay definitely needs to stay aware of the situation. The NAM is showing potential for some incredibly dangerous rainfall with this system, which would affect all the way from Destin to Tallahassee as it moves in. And remember, if this intensifies, it will create major problems as it goes up and out the East Coast. The GFS has it making landfall around Florida in 42 hours as a strong tropical storm. The Euro has it making landfall as a strong tropical storm somewhere around the Panhandle and Alabama in 48 hours. The GEM has it making landfall around the Florida Alabama state line in 42 hours. The ICON has it making landfall in 36 hours as a borderline hurricane. But definitely a lot of them are putting the heavy rain on the east side of it, which would cause major flooding for the areas as the storm rotates counterclockwise. I definitely think it's going to be a hurricane. I would guess category three is probably the strongest intensity it will reach. I would have said category five, but due to its asymmetrical size, I don't think it will get as strong as I thought it would. The wind shear is pretty intense, so I'd split the difference. Yeah, I guess 2.5. But this thing has potential for maximum rainfall. And so any type of storm surge on top of that would be dangerous and disastrous to the people affected. And so it is going to ride up the coast after it makes landfall. And then some of the models have had it do a weird thing where it goes out and then it hitches back in and meets up with this storm. And remember, things have been weird. And we're going to be in a pattern of wave after wave after wave where we have multiple major storms, like three, coming in the next seven days. So please, if you are along the coast, stay aware. We've only got like 48 hours till we're through this. And because I'm one of the mo most censored and shadow banned people on all of YouTube after seven years, you're probably going to have to keep rechecking back manually for updates if you would like them. Most people, a lot of people say they don't get notifications for my videos. Like I said, the models I've been watching have had it stop and then turn back in. So it's just something we're going to keep an eye out for. And it's strange because, you know, hurricane just indicates a wind speed when rain is the thing that kills the most people. And so it definitely seems like the meteorological community has been sleeping on this one. But, and I always think it's best to prepare for the worst, pray for the best, especially a year after everybody said it was just going to be like a tropical storm and it became a Category 5 hurricane. I'd stay aware, but as we can see here, all these models, none of them think it has potential to be a hurricane. I disagree. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting 48 hours and an interesting end to October, I do believe. Here, I'm just showing you one example of the models. This was the run earlier, six hours ago. But if you'll notice, it has, look at all that purple. And then watch how it goes up. It comes over and then it kind of stops. And then comes back and meets with the giant front. That is something for the Northeast to keep an eye on. And just a standard Thor News Asteroid Fight Club rule. Whenever you get glitches in the radars, take the weird weather watch up a notch. We're looking at water vapor now. And look at all that water vapor coming out of the Gulf. And so rain is going to be the major, major. And it's part of the Norbeaster. It's like the tail, dude. It's a giant system. And then you got volcanoes that have been popping off nonstop all year. Plus, it's only 48 hours away from the Eris alignment. Everything here is a reason to stay fully aware and just have a plan for you, your families, your friends, your pets, in case this thing does rapidly intensify over the next 48 hours. But it definitely looks like you got some major wet weather coming. And then remember, 
It's going to go up into South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. And then we'll watch what happens after that. I will keep you guys posted because it's what I do. I appreciate I appreciate all love, help, and support, prayers. And so if you want to send me a letter, thank you. And thank you to everybody out there who has supported me over the seven years of Thor News. Um, I've been in a bit of funk the last few days because the world's been a bit of an angry place where everybody just blames everybody all the time. And hopefully I can snap out of it. And so everybody stay cool and I will keep you posted and I will definitely be staying on this thing with laser beam focus for the next 48 hours. All right, God bless everyone.